Good morning, and welcome to First Baptist Blanchard. We are so glad that you are here to worship with us this morning. If you are our guest, we are especially glad that you are here. Would you please do us a favor? In the pew in front of you is this visitor's card. Would you please take it, fill it out, and that gives us a record of your visit and also gives us a way to pray for you. At the end of the service, would you take it to our welcome center and we have a gift we would love to give you. We know that God is going to do some amazing things this morning and we cannot wait to see what it does. So welcome to First Baptist Blanchard. Hello church family. Uh, as you all know, God's doing some exciting things in the area of missions that our church is involved in. And one of those areas is in Pueblo, Colorado, where our missionaries Jamie and Wendy Rowe serve. On December the 12th, Jamie and Wendy are hosting a Christmas fellowship for the community of the folks in that villa. For the month of November, our church is gonna have a toy drive and we will collect toys and can bring them to the foyer. In the first part of December, we're gonna take those toys to Jamie and Wendy to give to those children at that fellowship. Uh, the toys that he suggested were any kind of balls like football, basketball, baseball, soccer ball, and little, little trucks for the little guys and little dolls for the little girls. So uh, we will collect those in the foyer and so we ask that you uh, not gift wrap them so they'll know how to distribute them out to the different age groups. So again, we just want to say as part of the missions team, we want to say thank you and God bless you for the way God's going to use you in this outreach. Church family, just a reminder that tonight at 6 p.m. we are having sweet fellowship and a reception for Tracy and Andrew. Please bring your favorite sweets and let's have a good time. Pace setters, this Friday at 6 p.m. you are having a fellowship in the well. Please come and have a good time. Next Sunday is a big day in the life of our church. First, we start off at 7.30 with church-wide breakfast and then we have services as normal. But that night at 6 p.m., we are having a community-wide Thanksgiving service at the Nazarene Church. So come be a part of that great community event. Church family, just a reminder, November 28th, we are having the Southern Plainsman Quartet here in concert at 6 p.m. Come early, get you a good seat. See you there. Good morning, church. So good to see you this morning. I did forget to put one thing on the video this week. Uh, starting this Wednesday, Brother Clay is teaching a new disciple class called The Bible Speaks. Uh, that is a free class, and I, he is excited about teaching it. If you do want a book, that book will be $12, and uh, you can register through the app, the Church Center app, the website, or just call Mackenzie, and she'll get it taken care of. All right? So we're going to start just a little different this morning. We are so excited. We have a couple that are going to be a couple of people, not a couple, sorry, couple of people that are being baptized this morning. So look at the baptistry. Amen. Amen. Well, church family, I'm excited to have an opportunity and a privilege to celebrate today with, uh, with these folks. And this is Jace. And Jace, a couple of weeks ago during one of our services, came forward and um, just laid on the altar, literally, and, father, and just, just surrendered his heart to Christ. And through the, through the morning, as God just spoke to him, he just, um, in total surrender, gave his life to Christ. And Brother Sam had a chance to talk to him and just to, to hear his story, how he wanted to follow Christ. Jason, whom have you placed your faith and your trust? Jesus Christ. Jesus. Amen. It's an obedience commands from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I baptize you, my brother. In the name of the Father, Son, buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk with the unity of God. Right. Come right around here. Jason's mom, Miss Sonia, is just stay with me for a second. He's going to help me because she has been struggling with her back this week and has had an injury. So we didn't want it to complicate her neck and her shoulder. So this is his mom, Sonia. Sonia is one of the amazing people who made a decision for Christ at a young age and was baptized. But then as she got into her adult years, she said, you know what? I, I truly need to nail down that my heart is his. And she gave and surrendered her life to Christ as an adult. And um, she just never took that next step to have baptism on the right side of her salvation. So when we were talking this week, she said, that's what I'm ready to do. Sonia, in whom have you placed your faith and your trust? In the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's in obedience commands of our Lord Jesus. I baptize you, my sister. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, for every Christ of baptism, grace to all, in the nearness of life. Amen.
Isn't that a great way to start a service? Amen. Would you stand up with us? And we're just going to worship, have a good time in the house of the Lord this morning. So good to see all of you. How many, how many of you can't wait to get to heaven? Amen. If you didn't raise your hand, we need to have another conversation, okay? <laughs> so good. We're just, I'm telling you, we're just going to have a good time this morning. And I want you to do something. We're going to practice this morning like we're already in heaven, okay? So we're just going to have a good time. Can you handle that? All right, the rest of you just get on board with us, okay? You ready? All right, let's sing it. And some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. And when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, oh, what a day, oh, glorious day that will be. I'll sing it again. Let me ask you something. 
You know anybody that's sick? Just raise your hand. Anybody know, anybody know any sick people? Anybody know any hurting people? They in pain. <laughs> Brother lifts his hand way up, Brother Craig. We all know somebody who's going through something, amen? Brother got, just had a, got out of neck surgery a couple of weeks ago and is here this morning. We all go through something, and we've all known people who've died. Jordan and I have had three people in the past year that have passed away. It's part of life. It's part of what we go through. But I'm thankful that if we know the Lord, when we close our eyes for that last time, and then we open them, the next time's with Jesus. Amen. We in his throne. We're at his feet. And so this morning, I, I know we're a Baptist church. I get it. But I'm excited to get to heaven, see some of y'all just give a little holy grunt, okay? And so we, I'm telling you, we're going to have a good time this morning. I need you to help me out a little bit. We're going to sing this one more time, and I want you to act like we're stepping into heaven and Jesus is taking us by the hand, showing us where everything's at. All right, can we do that? So let's sing it one more time. Ready? On oh, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and when I look upon his face the one who saved I love this song. It's very simple. It says, God, you're so good. So this morning, no matter what you've gone through, hopefully that is your testimony, that God, no matter the circumstances, he has been good. So let's sing this together. Amazing love that welcomes me with kindness of mercy. That called with blood, wholeheartedly, my soul undeserving. Come on, sing it out. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. God, you're so so good to me. Behold the cross from age to age, and hour by hour. Oh, the dead are raised, the sinner saved.
you just shout it out whatever can you just give a little testimony of how God's been good to you anybody just want to say something yeah amen he said God's brought him through his next surgery and he's whole again anybody else amen yes ma'am Eight-year-old grandchild, too. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Mm. Amen. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Yeah. I, I think we could all testify that God has brought us through something or another. And if if you don't know that, he you're living and he has. Yes, ma'am. Miss Addie. You know what I love? Yes, ma'am. Healed his broken foot. Amen. You know, you know what I love about the Lord is this. Is we can we go through storm after storm, and there's a lot of times we wonder, God, are you here? Do you even understand what I'm going through? Why are you letting me go through this? I don't understand. But the good thing is God's not worried. He's not, he's not confused. He he hasn't lost a battle. It's not even close. The, the great thing about our God is He is forever. That's who He is. There, there's no going away. There's no diminishing of who He is or His power. He is forever. And so you can count on, that's a promise. God said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So no matter what you're going through, He promised He would not leave you. Therefore, Satan has no authority over a promise of God. And so you don't have to worry. Because we serve a God who is forever living forever reigning forever what I love he's forever interceding for us so when you don't have the words he knows the groans of your heart so we serve a God who cares we serve a God who loves us and so our job is to forever glorify him 
because he is forever glorified. He is forever reigning. So we're going to sing this song. It simply says that. stars they went the morning sun was dead the savior of the world was fallen his body on the cross his blood poured out for us the weight of every curse upon him
Sometimes I don't know what to do next, and I feel like I'm in one of those times, which is great. I just don't want to be, I don't want to be out of the will of God. I don't want to miss Him or ruin what I believe is going on in the room. So can we, can we just do this? Can we just take a time, Miss Nancy, just play softly. Can we just take a time and pray and just seek the Lord for a minute? Altars are open if you want to come. If anything, if you don't know what to pray, just thank him for who he is and what he's done for you. If you need to be prayed for, we've got ministers who will pray for you. this morning Father your word says if two or three are gathered then in your name you're there Father you're here Father we pray all the time that our praises you, would be a pleasing thing to your ear and you would invade the praises of your people and Father you have invaded this place this morning Father, I pray that you will do what you want to in this room. Father, don't let us quench your spirit. Don't let us get in the way. Father, do what you want to. You do have your will in this room. Father, I pray if anyone needs to be saved this morning, you would convict their heart even now. Father, if people need to get right with one another, I pray you convict them now. Father, whatever you want to do in this room, you have freedom to do it. Father, we pray all the time as a staff, Father, we want you to come in and change our routine and change what we've planned just to do what you want to do. And Father, we believe you're doing that right now. So Father, you just have your will in here. Have your way. Father, again, we thank you for who you are and what you've done for us and all that you're doing in this place. I thank you. We don't have to wonder if, you've by our, if you're by our side or not. Father, you have promised you'll always be with us, no matter the storms that we go through. Father, this morning, I thank you that you are God. And even when I can't see you, even when I can't feel you, even when I can barely stand, you're still right there. Father, I would take it a step further and say we can't even walk without you holding us.
say this morning is wow isn't it um just really good to be in the presence of the lord it's really good to be ushered into the presence of the lord if you have your bible this morning turn to deuteronomy be looking at chapter 2 verse 7 oh give thanks is the title to my message theme the kind of theme I want you to just resonate through your mind I want it to just roll over roll over roll over what am I thankful for I wanted to get through that introduction so bad because I want to say this dude where where do you get dude I'm thankful for you what I'm more thankful for is the obedience when the spirit's moving like that to know what to do or not to do don't quench it and to just know that the God had something that some folks needed to be praying and seeking the Lord for, man, that, that just, good job, Brother Kurt. Man, just getting us right there ready. So this morning, that just leads it into, what am I thankful for? You, you have already, he, he started that already where, where you was asking and kind of talking through it and different things like that. I'm, I'm not going to ask you right now, but here's what I do ask. For the rest of this week, if the Lord doesn't come back today or he tarries, begin to think about this. You know, we're leading into the Thanksgiving season, right? What am I thankful for? We really need to just roll that around in our mind. What am I thankful for? What am I 
thankful for. I'm thankful that I listened to the Lord this week because Thursday in the afternoon, I was ready to preach Nehemiah 9. Had an outline already sketched out, had it all put in play where I wanted to go, but the Lord said, no, we need to get ready for Thanksgiving. And I don't want to be like Walmart and jump into Christmas already. Of course, they did that six months ago, but I'm kind of slow. But I want us to get our mind ready to be thankful for the most amazing gift ever given to us, and that's Jesus. And so I believe if I start preaching and getting us ready and start a, a, an attitude of gratitude, an attitude of, of thanksgiving and getting our heart and our mind ready to give thanks, Josh, we'll be ready at Christmas. I saw something today, man, some of y'all are already ready. Goodness, Lord's moving and speaking to some of you. So just thankful for the Lord speaking and saying, hey, go this direction, go that direction, and just share what it is that's going on. So have you thought about it for a while? What am I thankful for? Well, Deuteronomy, if you have your Bible and it's turned open to chapter 2, verse 7, it says this. Hey, let's stand. I always like standing in reverence of reading God's Word. I know you've been standing a little bit during worship, but we'll stand just for a few more minutes. And by 1230, you're going to go, man, I wish we stood a little bit longer. For the Lord your God has blessed you in all the work of your hand. He knows you're trudging through this great wilderness. These 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you, and you have lacked nothing. Father God, I pray this morning, Lord, anybody that's trudging through this wilderness, this world, this life that we're living in, Lord, that you'll begin to grip their spirit this morning. God, you'll begin to speak into them. And Lord, as my sister was trying to get out a testimony this morning and it just couldn't quite come, Lord, you say in your word that you hear the groans of our spirit and you know what we're saying even when we don't even know. So Father, I pray this morning, speak to our hearts and lives. God, get in between those hard places and those hard cracks and begin to break through those strongholds, break through those things that are holding us back. And so, when we finish, we can know beyond a shadow of a doubt what we're thankful for. And that's the Holy Spirit of God indwelling inside of us. God, we love you and thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. See, the world feels like a great wilderness sometimes, right? I heard some of y'all already saying, man, some things that maybe in the weeks past uh, that was going on in your life and it just gripped you. Different circumstances in life that have been happening and you just, it groaned you. Craig was just sharing with me outside, walking in his house, just taking some steps and, and slips on Scooby-Doo rug and, and hurts his, his, his leg again. See, there's this wilderness. It feels like a wilderness sometimes, doesn't it? It feels dry. It feels deserted. It feels like God's nowhere around sometimes, right? But let me tell you this. He's with you. He has an unchanging hand. And you know what we got to do sometimes? We got to reach up where he's already reaching down, and we got to put our hand in that unchanging hand and just hold on when it doesn't make sense, when it feels like it's dry, when it feels like nothing around us makes a lick's bit of sense. But you know what? God's there in the wilderness. You know where else he's there? Because I've been, I, you know where I've been? I've been on the top of, of some of those beautiful mountains in Colorado. I went back out, I went there one day, and I, I'm, I'm just telling y'all something. Y'all always like, man, you always about on the near brink of death. I was. I had spinal meningitis. I had 106 fever at one point in my life. I had spent about a week in the hospital, and I told Christy, I said, look, let's go to Colorado. I want to die on a mountain. It's cool. I'll, I'll be okay there. I want to be as close to God as I can be, and I want to just reach out and almost touch his hand. I want to be so close to him. Well, you can see he didn't take me. Praise God. And I've been to the lowest of low points in my life. And you know what? God was there too. He's in those dark places. I've preached a lot of funerals with um, 
Psalm 23 when it talks about in, in, you know, in those dark shadows in, in the crevices in the rocks because you know what sometimes we want to hide in those rocks see our, our, our bodies our, our minds we're, we're known and, and, and prone to be self-reliant we're prone to be to, to, to scatter we don't really want to be around each other we want to do life our own way. We want to do things our, our way and all that kind of stuff. But that's not God's design. God wants to be with us. So we keep looking here. The first point I want to look at us this morning is thankful for His providence. The protective care of God. That's what I was talking about. In those lows of lows, He's there. His providential care is all over us. That's the god size care when we feel like no one cares. You know who cares? God cares. He cares for you so much that 2,000 years ago, you weren't even born yet. You know what? He made the ultimate sacrifice. He gave his life. He exchanged his life for your life before you were even born. He reached down when you weren't even reaching up. You didn't even know him had no clue who he was you know what the bible says that you were dead in your transgressions you were dead in sin you were dead men walking but you know what god loves you he loves you so much that he cared and sent the ultimate gift so you could have life and have life more abundant that's the protective care of god see the people didn't they didn't always obey god john is that a news flash people don't always obey god <laughs> he's saying no if you can't hear him and if you online can't hear him, no. You know what they call that, Miss Beverly? Disobedience. You know, we're more <laughs> we're wired with a sinful nature. I wasn't wired with a good nature. I was wired with a sinful nature. I didn't have to go to um, disobedience school. I had to go to obedience school. For 28 years, she's been teaching me well. <laughs> if you notice, she's not here today. She ironed for me, by the way, before she left. It's the only reason I have this red shirt on. The reason I'm saying that is because we lost to Arkansas last night, and I'm still bitter about it. But anyway, I would have had purple and gold on this morning because I'm still praying for my Tigers. Win or lose, but she's not here this morning. She... She went to see something that is so amazing and so beautiful. Her name's Emery Ray. She got to go home. She got to go down to Pineville and, and see the baby. And I said, when are you coming back? She said, I don't know. <laughs> so you know what I did? I, I'm, I'm proactive. I sent my, my number two, Annalise, with her. So I know she's coming back. They have school tomorrow. You always got to be one step ahead of her. Because, man, I didn't think she was coming back. She sent me a 1,000 pictures yesterday. Man, I'm just sitting there. She's like, I'm just eating her up. She's like, I'm trying to uh, convince that they were going to go on a date last night and everything. She was like, I'm trying to convince them to let me keep her overnight. I was like, are you crazy? What if she starts crying and wanting her mama and everything? She was like, I've raised three. I can handle that. I was like, okay, it's on you. But God has a providential care for us. Amen? He cares for us. We see in the text this, that he protected them through this 40 years where they were wandering, they were going, and all over the children of Israel were wandering all around the desert for 40 years because they didn't obey. They didn't obey. They didn't trust in the Lord. Man, it didn't take them very long. He brought them out of Israel. He brought them, I mean, not Israel. He brought them out of Egypt, and, and they were moving out of Egypt and everything. Man, it wasn't just a few minutes what they started doing, Kylie grumbling. Grumbling at the leader, grumbling at God, grumbling at nothing, grumbling at that, grumbling, grumbling, grumbling. Just disobedient. But God cared enough for them. You know what happens in our disobedience? How can you praise the Lord in obedience and in disobedience? Does that make sense? It does, because in disobedience, whom he loves, he chastens. That means that I know that I'm a child of God if I get out of his will and I'm disobedient, that he brings me to the woodshed. You know what that is, Kylie? That's the Holy Spirit of God with his finger right on the pulse of my heart. And when I say something I don't need to say, when I do something I don't need to do, when I act in disobedience, 
that means this if you have Romans 12 6 says this for whom the Lord loves he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives and the good part is this in verse 11 right under it says now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present man I don't know about y'all ain't many times when I was getting my tail tore up that I was like woo count this joy this is a blast it wasn't a blast at my house here's where it is brother man back there but painful that's what scripture says. it was painful nevertheless afterwards it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it see you got to be trained by it trained you know what the lord is disciplining us he's refining us he's transforming us daily you know why not to be more like me he's trying to get the me out of me and have jesus exemplar just honored inside me he's trying to out he wants to bring jesus out of me so others can see jesus and know that he lives within me and so just, just so i'm you know like i got the one finger pointing yeah it's y'all too it's you too he's refining you he, he's doing supernatural things inside you so god's protective care is with us <laughs> you may be going through some times that you think are hard right i heard a lot of y'all from this side of the room to this side of the room there's hard things happening in your life you know what it may be it may be the holy spirit of god trying to get your attention you may be saying man you're disobedient you've fallen out of the wheel you've fallen out of the plan and you know what y'all may be hard-headed as i am and he may just have to keep for 40 years beating and pounding you know hey 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 follow me turn from your sin and yourself turn from me and turn to me as your savior follow me listen to me the me is jesus and ain't me by the way God's trying to get our attention because we're not following him potentially. But here's the other thing. Maybe you are following God, and it's hard even then. Remember the, the high places and the lows? He's with us through all of them. And here's one I know you got memorized, a lot of you. Romans 8, 28, right? And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. See, there is a purpose in all the things that are happening. The highs, the lows, the, the, the unchanging hand, the, the, the foot getting, you know, something happened to your leg, something happening, you know. All things work together. All things, good, bad, disobedient, obedient. Why? For God's glory, for His name's sake. Leads us to the next one. I'm area that I want to be thankful for. It kind of doesn't go in the... In the in the way I, I, I was writing this, but, but just hear me all the way through in this one. God's with us in the picture. Preacher, what are you talking about? I'm thankful that God is here in the picture. See, I'm not a photographer. I don't know anything. Zero. I take a picture. I, I probably cut your head off. You remember that guy that's trying to take a picture, can't take a picture? But I know one thing. God knows a big picture all we see doug a lot of times is the small picture we can't understand it why why did i trip on scooby-doo why, why did this happen why did that happen we're in the small frame we don't know the bigger picture but you know what god knows the big picture and we have to live through it and go through it why because we know his providential care is with us so even when we see a small frame god knows the big picture he knows the big picture whatever struggle you're going through whatever trial you're going through god knows the big picture he knows it all because of his perspective he has a perspective that we don't see a lot of times do we you know how far i can see about this far and god can see way out there isn't that a good thing because man if it weren't for that i've put myself in some bad situations and i could see them right here but god knew what he was going to do with them out there he takes every struggle every tear 
every trial, every tragedy, and he sees the big picture. So don't get caught up in the small things. Get caught up in Jesus because he won't leave you. He won't fail you. He won't forsake you. He loves you. So be thankful for God's big picture. Deuteronomy, I, I want to just keep... I'm, this is the one verse, man. If you just sit down on one verse and just chisel it out, what is he saying? He says this, For the Lord your God has blessed you in all the works of your hand. He knows. Isn't that good that he knows? He knows. That's the big picture. He knows. He knows you're trudging through this great wilderness. He knows. Isn't it good that he knows? So then why do I pray? Because I don't know. But I do know the one who listens to my prayers. And he has a providential care for me. And so therefore, if I'm going through this trial, if I'm going through this tragedy, he knows. Josh, I don't like you sitting way back there. I like you right here. <laughs> I had to tell you that, by the way. I miss you on the front row. But God knows. And we need to be thankful for this big picture because he knows the plan. See, when he's the Lord to his children, he listens and he knows the bigger picture. To me, that's just good. It's good that he knows the big picture. And you know what? I can trust in the big picture because he is the big I am. He is the great I am. Who else is there to trust in? I, I like it. I, I, I don't remember which one of the Bible characters, and, and y'all probably remember. When he said, oh, it was, it was Peter when he was declaring Jesus as Lord. And, and he said, so Peter, who do, you, who do they say I am? And they start saying who all he is. And he says, now who do you say that I am? He said, you're the Lord, you're the Christ. And he said, man did not reveal that to you. The Holy Spirit of God did. See, the bigger picture, he's the Christ. He's the Messiah. He's the Lord. So we can be thankful in the big picture and we can trust that he is there. Jeremiah 29, 11, y'all know that one? For I know the plans I have for you. ESV says this, declares the Lord. New King James says, thoughts. So not only is he thinking about you, he has a declarated plan for you. That's a good God. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to what? Prosper you. To give you a hope and give you a future. That's a good God, amen? He knows. He, so even in the word welfare, that means or peace. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for your welfare or peace and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. Here's where it gets better and better. Verse 12. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. It, you hear the better and the better. I like to say the gooder and the gooder. It just gets gooder. And then it's gooder. And man, it's going to get great here in just a second. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. See, that's the best news of all. See, when you're going through the trial, when you're going through the junk, when you're going through all that, what are you to do? You're to seek the Lord, and he hears you. And he has a plan for your life, a plan of peace, a plan of goodness. And he has a declaration for that. Man, what a good God we serve. What a good God. So that brings me to the next point is this. Thankful for his purpose. He has a purpose. Deuteronomy 2, 7. For the Lord your God has, has blessed you in all the works of your, of your hand. He knows you're trudging through this great wilderness. Going through the wilderness of, of life is God's plan, and it's a purpose for you. He has a purpose for it. He has a purpose for the wilderness. It could be drawing you closer. He could, I don't know what he's going to do. But you know what? If you seek him and you seek his face, he'll reveal it to you. He'll show you the why, why you're going through. You know, it, it's okay to ask God why. I don't know if a preacher's ever told you something contrary to that because it's not true. We can ask him why. We, can't, we don't need to question him in the why, though. We just say, hey, Lord, can, can you... Can I walk me through this? Because I'm going to tell you what, it feels like the wilderness right now. It feels like a dry and weary land. 
walk me through it. And you know what? He'll walk you through it. Step by step. Aren't you glad that he walks with us step by step? Because he has a purpose and a plan for us. Colossians 2, 6 and 7 says this. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Man, we ought to walk with thanksgiving, walk with faith in thanksgiving, knowing that he is our Savior. We're at peace with him. That we, if, if we've received Christ Jesus in this plan that he has for us, we've received him, you know what? We walk in faith, not by sight. We trust in him. So God has a purpose. When you're lost, God has a purpose. You remember when you were lost? You know what God's pur- purpose is? Salvation. That none should perish but have everlasting life. That's the plan. God wants you to have a personal, intimate relationship with Him. You ever heard a scripture called John 3, 16? It says, this is a purpose and a plan. God, for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not what? But have what? That's a pretty good purpose and a pretty good plan. Amen? He did it almost 2,000 years ago purpose and a plan he, 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 he put it you know what I really like about it too it's called action he put action to the plan he didn't just say hey I don't want any to perish and have he had to go all the way to the cross fully committed fully obedient it takes faith to walk in Jesus doesn't it can't see him can you can't feel him but you know what? I can't explain wind either, but I can sure feel it when I'm out there on a deer stand. It's about to blow me off a tree. You get wind chapped and all that. I'm going to tell you what. He'll put a mark on your life. And you'll start walking in faith. you start believing in faith, and you'll trust in faith. Because you know what? When it is in the wilderness, you remember the last time he brought you from the wilderness. And you remember the faith that it took to bring you through that wilderness. Leads me to the last, well, almost the last point. (laughs) Thank God for patience. See, I, I hear so many people go, man, don't pray for patience. You'll get it. Don't pray for patience. Wash out with patience. Let's see how patient he is. 40 years they walked around in that wilderness. 40 years they walked around in that dry and weary land. But you know what? God was there with them through it all. 40 years God has been with you, it says. 40 years uh, he was with the people and they were unfaithful. 40 years they were disobedient. 40 years they were stiff-necked. 40 years rebellious. But God was still there with them. See, this, I, I know this stiff neck one because it's in 917, and I'd already studied it and knew where I was going with this one. But he uses the, the word stiff neck twice. One time, I've always been taught in preaching and different things. If, if, if it's one time in a, in a scripture, it's important. When it's two times, it's doubly important. Must be something trying to get our attention. You know what? We're rebellious people, we're stiff necked. We want to do it our way. We want to be disobedient. We want to follow what we're wanting to do. So here it is in, in Nehemiah 9, 17. They refused to obey. That, that's, that's, that's what they were doing. That's what, they were unfaithful. And they were not mindful of your wonders that you did among them. But they hardened their necks. And in their rebellion, they appointed a leader. Oh, my goodness gracious. I don't know if you're picking up on that. They're saying right there that, God, you ain't good enough. We're going to get our own leader. You done drug us out out in this wilderness. We, we, I, I've had enough. We're going to get another leader. Holy smokes. I'd be fearful of that one. They appointed a leader to, their, uh, to return to their bondage. But you, here, here's the good part. You ready? But you are God, ready to pardon they're guilty. They, they had another God on the mantle. There was another God that they had shaped and formed. There was another God in the place of the, uh, the great I am. And you know what? He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. He says, 
ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abundant in kindness, and did not forsake them. She's got it on the shirt. Ain't God good? I deserve death, hell, and the grave. In my sinfulness, I deserve death. But you know what God did? He pardoned. Sinner, forgiven. He exchanged his royal place. He exchanged his life for my life. My filthiness, the Bible says that my righteousness is as filthy rags. But Jesus is something totally different. He exchanges that life. So I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to break down those things about pardon and everything, but for 40, the word 40, it's, it's, it's in the Bible several times in there. You know what it stands for? It stands for testing, judging. 40 years they were tested. 40 years they wanted to see, are you going to follow me? 40 years in the wilderness, are you going to follow me? Are you listening to my voice? I've given you manna. I've given you quail. I've given you all these different things. I've provided every need that you have. I've given you a, a light in the dark. I've given you a, a cover for the heat. All those different things. So he's testing. Will they follow me? Will they, will they go? See, some of you may hadn't made 40 yet. and Maybe you're sitting there going, I ain't been in the wilderness 40 years. No, you hadn't lived 40 years. I'm 49. I've, I've lived 40 of those years. I know there's a lot of wilderness in there. There's a lot of things being disobedient. God, man, he'll bring you through a lot of stuff. But he has a purpose and he has a plan. And we have to be thankful for all those things. Have you thanked God for his patience lately? Good job, Lloyd. Here's what they are. He says, as God was with them, and he forgave them, but you are God. See, that's the first thing. We got to know lordship. We got to know bond servant. And we have to know who he is and who we are. He's Lord, we're not. He's the master, we're the slave. He's the one that gives the commands, and we say, yes, sir. So you are God. He's ready to pardon. Man, isn't that good? That he's not all swole up, mad, and all that kind of, won't follow me? Fine. He's faithful to pardon us gracious and merciful let me ask you something last time somebody wronged you were you gracious and merciful slow to anger abundant in kindness he says there and did not forsake them all those things they slap Jesus, they slap God in the face with all that time. Forgiven. See, many of you might be sitting out there this morning, living your life for yourself, not even, you know, looking for God and whatnot, and you just happen to come today and the Lord brought you here. I don't believe in happenstance. I believe the Lord brought you here on purpose. He's trying to get your attention one more time. He's trying to show you that He is the great I am that he is gracious, he is loving, he will pardon your sin. And you know what the greatest thing is? He forgets it as far as the east is from the west. That's as far as he can stretch his arms wide open. That's how much he loves you. That's how he's willing to forgive you. Have you thanked God for that patience lately? God was with them and he forgave them. Is there somebody in your life you need to forgive? Because you know what we're good about doing? Tally markers. Wrong me. Tally marker. Made me mad. Tally marker. You name it, y'all know. I got a quick fuse, preacher. I just say what comes to my mind. When they wrong me, I just fire from the hip. I just tell them like it is. Hmm. Boy, aren't you grateful that God don't love us like that? You know what that patience is? It's a fruit of the Spirit. So why not ask for something that's a fruit of the Spirit? 
because it's an identifier of who you are and if we identify with Christ we are to have every fruit attribute that he has and says that we need so stop firing from the hip <laughs> get in that peace get in that patience be, be in that willingness to pardon so there may be somebody you need to pardon today you've been holding on to it for 20 years 30 years and you need to let go of it I don't know why I'm going to share this but I'm going to share it it ain't, in my, it ain't in my notes it ain't even in my thought wheelhouse no I'm not because I'm going to cry if I start saying it there's some folks that you just need to forgive some may even be dead that's where I was wanting to go with it but it's hard for me to talk about things like that but you just might have to say God they wronged me in the past I just got to forgive them and you know what that does Kylie it just frees you you're drinking the poison when they're already dead just forgive them move on go with it give them the pardon and then thank the Lord for his patience 1 John 1 9 says this if we confess our sin he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness that's a pardon right there that's a pardon final thought for the Lord your God has blessed you in all the works of your hand he knows you're trudging through this great wilderness these 40 years the Lord your God has been with you let me ask you something are you thankful for his presence I don't know I'd, I don't know how I'd do it without him I'm just thankful through all the 40 years 49 years of the wilderness God was with me even when I wasn't with him and I didn't know him you know what I believe Josh I believe he was protecting me that whole time because you know what he knew the bigger picture he knew that he was going to use me to preach one day I had no clue God knows the bigger picture thank him for his presence thank him for him being in your life so these 40 years through these 40 years he was with them his presence was with them and that's good Nehemiah didn't really give this justice but I'm going to read it to you it's Nehemiah 9 12 we read it last week by a pillar of cloud you led them in the day and by a pillar of fire in the night to light for them the way which they should go that sounds good I like it but I like going all the way back to Moses telling the story in the Exodus when he says this and the Lord went before them that tells me the presence of God went before them that the presence of God was with them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way and by night a pillar of fire to give them light that they might travel by day and by night the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from the people I like that much better I know it's a memoir of, of, of Nehemiah just kind of telling about how, you know, the, 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 the encounter and how it all happened and all that. But you can hear that Moses went through it. You know what? It's a lot different when you go through it. Amen? You have the firsthand recollection. You have the firsthand knowledge. You have, you have the eyewitness account and everything like this. So when, when Pharaoh was at their back and, and, you know, they're coming down at him and the sea had to open or they were going to die right there, he saw the presence of God. He saw the presence of God speaking through a burning bush saying, I am who I am. See, this morning the Holy Spirit of God may be speaking to your life right now and you need a firsthand eyewitness account you can't live off mom and daddy's faith you can't live off grandma and grandpa's faith it has to be an intimate personal relationship with Jesus you have to call him I am you have to call him Lord it can't be mom and daddy's faith it has to be your faith you have to trust in him you have to understand the presence of God of when he gripped you and got a hold of you that's why I don't use the word did you get saved it's a life changing experience have you ever been changed by experience the experience of God 
then that's what salvation looks like it's not i just got saved i walked down i made a profession and all that it's who you once were and who you are now that's salvation and that's a life change if you still talk the same walk the same look the same act the same speak the same think the same enjoy all the old things you need to understand you need a life changing experience with god He's got to get a hold of your heart, Ezekiel. Y'all sometimes may not understand why I love Ezekiel 36, 26, because I understand he once took a hard, mean, calloused heart, and he came in and he did, he did open heart surgery. He changed this hard heart and he put a new heart. It's a soft heart, and it's a response to the Holy Spirit of God. That's what it means to have a new heart heart this presence so you could tell that that moses in exodus had been he said the lord went before them and he did not depart today the presence of the holy spirit looks different you know what it looks like the presence of god it's the holy spirit do you have the holy spirit of god inside your life if you've been born again and you've had a life-changing experience that's what's in there it's when you sin and i said it a little while ago press a little bit more press can't get away from it i can't willfully do sin anymore and enjoy it i can do it but that gum he sure brings me to the woodshed and reminds me of it tears my tail up for it you know why because whom he loves he chastens that's why all that scripture makes sense so now we have the holy spirit of god in us so when you go to Walmart, you know what you, you're packing? And, and listen to me. I love that, that verse about where two or three are gathered. He's right in the middle. But I'm going to tell you right now, when I accepted Jesus as my Savior and Lord, he's with me wherever I go. I, I like the two or three gathered. That's, that's a, that's a three-stranded cord is what that represents there. It, it, it's saying iron sharpening iron and where two or three are like, like in it and, and praying about it. That's all good. But I'm telling you right now, you bring Jesus everywhere you go. So where have you brought Jesus this week? Let me say that one more time because some of y'all were sleeping on me. Where'd you bring Jesus this week? Some of y'all brought him in some places he didn't need to go because you went in some places you didn't need to go. I ain't going to be the Holy Spirit and start digging in your mailbox, but you know what? He'll start revealing it to you right now. Where'd you bring him? because he's with us miss beverly wasn't say i'll never leave you nor forsake you we may leave we may try to bail we may try to go do some things we shouldn't do but he, he he's not gone anywhere dun, dun. Dun, dun. Dun, dun. he's right here in your heart beating he's right there with you where are you bringing him have you been thankful for where he's brought you from and where he's bringing you to we should be everywhere we go you ever thought this because some folks do this sometimes where did he go man I, I was in a i was in a bad storm of life where did he go why did he abandon me man i my mom you know I, I, i'll give you a tearjerker my mom went through a major deal with i, I can't even explain it because i all I know is this. My mom signed power of attorney over to me because I have a brother that's a moron. And she wanted to make sure that her, her life wishes and all that was going to be well lived out. I'm going to tell you right now, that is a heavy burden when somebody puts that on you, when your parent is sick. My mom had to have a trach. She, she smoked for a long time. She had COPD. Um, my dad died, and, and it was a hard battle of cancer. She walked him through it the whole way for 10 years. And, and, and it, it just a lot of life happened to my mom. And my mom died young. And I had to go into the hospital day after day. I got a call one night at 3 o'clock in the morning. Get to Rapids General right now. 
You have to make a decision. My mom lost almost all the blood in her. They couldn't even explain how she was still alive. Her blood oxygen level was, was depleting. And the guy looked at me and said, Should I, do I need to resuscitate what I need to do? I said, my mom signed a form. Do not resuscitate. But she did want this. Do everything you can do to, you know, if that's, you know, do what you got to do and everything. He walked out of there. He said some ugly things to me during all that. And, you know, and we got her in a room and everything and, and she made it and she had a bleeding ulcer they had to put some kind of thing on it's so crazy what all happened and then in the final days she's taking dialysis because her, 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 her stuff's shutting down and, and all this kind of stuff and, and, and I, had, I, I took a break from it for a minute I, you just can't stand there day after day seeing somebody just die like that so I stepped away from it and I, I got a, a FaceTime my niece was sending me a thing say hey Mimi's doing better I think she's going to make it I'm like cool you know you go and, and then the doctor looks at you and says what's the, what's, what's the decision you, she, she can't be on this trait forever she can't you got one more day that's a lot of baggage to carry but you know what God's faithful to bring you through it so I don't know what you're going through today I don't know what you've battled in the past but I know one thing there's a God of the future quit looking in the rear view mirror that's a little bit of glass look in the forward mirror there's a big old windshield and I know this one thing, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. God loves you. He cares for you. <laughs> so yeah, when you're standing there and going, man, is God still here? He's here. He's the only thing that can get you through something like that. Hebrews 13, 5 says this, Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things that you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You know what I like about that scripture? You know, we're really quick to bring up, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But look just a little bit above it. What's, how, how, be content in thanksgiving, in, in the things that you have and the things that God has done for you. Be content. Be thanksgiving. Be thankful. Because he will never leave you nor forsake you. So again, disobedience, we fail him. But again, he never fails us. He never leaves us. Last time, we'll read it one more time. For the Lord your God has blessed you in the works of your hand. He knows you're trudging through this great wilderness. These 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you. And you have lacked nothing. That's what I love out of the whole thing, through it all. I don't know about you, I, am, I haven't lacked for anything. <laughs> Food, shelter, breath. I've not lacked for anything. I'm going to tell you right now, I've been dirt poor before too. There's poor and then there's dirt poor. never leave you nor forsake you lack of nothing couldn't we all agree to that that's one thing that we ought to have thanksgiving for right now if we wasn't thankful for anything else through the wilderness through the trudging through through the 40 days of, of, of testing and trying and and all those different things i will never leave you he, he's never left us and we've never lacked for anything so today thank him for his providence Today, thank Him for the picture. Today, thank Him for the purpose. Thank Him for His patience. And then above all, thank Him for His presence. His presence in your heart. So where you are right now, let's, we're going to have a time of invitation. So can I ask you all to do a few little things? First off, can we just pray for a few minutes? Heads down eyes closed nobody kind of looking around you know why that works really good because you're still and you're quiet and you're allowing the quietness of God to still small voice speaking to you right now
So let me ask you something. Do you have salvation that you're thankful for? The Bible says to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Have you ever worked that out? Do you know Him as Savior and Lord? If you do, I'm so thankful for that. I'm glad that you know that you know. Let me ask you something. Have you ever had a life-changing experience where somehow the Holy Spirit of God just got in and gripped your heart, ripped you inside out, turned you inside out, flipped you upside down, did something just supernatural that can only be explained by God? See, that sounds totally different than going, I walked down at VBS and I filled out a card or, you know, I had this emotional experience. It's not an emotional experience. There's nothing about emotion. It's a life change. It's where the Holy Spirit of God gets in there and just does a work inside your life. If not, you know what? You can ask Jesus into your heart and into your life today and you can have a life-changing experience to admit that you're a sinner that's one of the hardest things a man can do or a woman because pride kicks in immediately I'm not bad I haven't done anything wrong I hadn't murdered anybody you start judging your life to other people and we're to judge it to God's standards for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God the Bible says so we have to recognize that we're a sinner. Well, then what? What do I do once I know that I'm a sinner? Acknowledge that Jesus is Lord, that He is the Savior, that He can forgive you of your sin, that He can save you from yourself. He can save you from that sin that just keeps rearing its ugly head in your life. So it's admitting you're a sinner, believing that Jesus can and will forgive you of your sins, <laughs> believing that Jesus is who... The Bible says he is, that he lived and died and rose again. And then one of the hardest things is confess him as Lord, confess him as Master, confess that I am a sinner and that I need a Savior. And so, for those that say, Man, I am born again, I, I'm, I'm a believer, I'm going to just ask you this Does your walk with the Lord feel like you're in a wilderness? Does it feel dry and cold? Does it feel like, man, God's a million miles away? You know what? You can restore that relationship right where you are today. All you have to do is just say, Lord, I, I turned my back for a while. I've, I've lived, I've slipped off into sin, and I've sinned against you and you alone, and I need you to forgive me of my sins. You know what that's called? Repentance. You can repent of your sin, turn from it, and restore that relationship that you already had with him. How about this? Maybe he's trying to get your attention. Maybe you've been out there in that wilderness for a while because he's trying one more time to get your attention. You know one thing I know about faith? Faith moves. It moves people. It moves during the invitation. Forsaking all, I trust him. That's what faith looks like. So let's do this. While we're praying, let's stand. If the Holy Spirit of God is speaking and moving in your life, we're going to have men down here in the front. They'll lead you in the plan of salvation. They'll lead you to Jesus. They'll share with you what it looks like to be saved. The next move is you reacting to the Holy Spirit. So do you need to be obedient and move? Father God, this is your time of invitation. I pray if there's anyone here that needs to be born again. Have a life-changing experience. Turn from their sin and turn to you. God, I pray that they do it in this moment. We're not going to drag it out. But God, we want to be obedient. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you need to come, come forward now. Come just as you are. The Spirit calls So come just as you are Come and 
tonight sweet fellowship and we're also going to have a time of uh, just fellowship with the oars tonight and uh, so if it's sweet fellowship you know what has to happen you have to bring the sweet <laughs> we need some of you guys to bring some sweet treats and some sweet different things and there it is on the we're gonna have a little reception for the oars and and um, just thankful that they're here and everything so tonight at six we won't be in here we'll be in the well okay that makes sense sweet fellowship that you're going to bring and it's going to be at six in the well all right i'm gonna pray and dismiss us father god lord we thank you for the day now there's so many things that we can be thankful for we're just thankful for your son jesus and what he's done inside our lives we love you and thank you in jesus name amen <laughs>